Hello and welcome back. Today I wanted to shoot a review of this saber, which is the Contact Flow Saber from Saber Flux Workshop. Now you might have seen this one recently in a video that I did on an introduction to Contact Saber Flow. Uh, so this is a saber that's designed for those contact moves, which is, which is basically manipulating the saber without having to grab it by balancing it on your body or rolling it around your shoulders or arms or the back of your wrist or neck, etc. So this is a saber that is designed for that. And this sort of saber is very few and far between. There are not very many of them that are made because the aesthetics of it is a lot less like a lightsaber and more like a more traditional flow tool. So I wanted to talk about this one specifically from Christian Castro at Saber Flux Workshop. Uh, talk about the components and how it stacks up as a flow tool and as a lightsaber. So first off, let's look at what it's made of. The pommel on this, which provides the counterweight, is made of a 3D printed uh, rubber material. Um, I think this is uh, PET, or PETG material, sort of. It's a, it's a flexible material. This is very dense, so it provides a counterweight. Uh, it is press fit onto the end of the saber here. Now, this is a press fit, but it's a press fit that doesn't seem to come off. It seems to be a very good fit because I've dropped this a bunch and this thing has never popped off and flown away. So the press fit on this is pretty exact, but uh, a pretty no frills rubber ball, more or less. Okay, underneath that, we have a metal tube uh, that contains the chassis and the recharge port. Okay, the recharge port, this thing comes with a charger, and when you plug it in, it actually has a light that indicates that it's charging and a different light that'll indicate that it's charged. I believe it's uh, red and blue. All right, there is a set screw round in here somewhere under this electrical tape that would allow you to pull the chassis out. You're not supposed to do that, but it can be done. All right, this piece of metal right here is fused to, or not fused to, but uh, set in this carbon fiber shaft up here. I'll get to that in just a second. This right here is most of the counterweight. This thing just protects the saber when it falls and provides a little bit of extra weight at the end. But most of the counterweight is this right here, which I believe is kind of a um, tire tube sort of material that's wrapped and then, and then covered. Uh, so it makes, it's actually seamless, which is nice. But uh, this is most of the weight right here, and it is flexible and rubber. All right, now the shaft of the thing is a carbon fiber shaft, which is nice because it's extremely durable. Uh, the chassis is inside of there, and it's wrapped with a sports grip. You wrap flow props with sports grip most for the, mostly for the point, or for the, uh, the fact that if this were metal or raw carbon fiber, if you were trying to do moves where it was rolling around your body, uh, it would just fly off into space because there would be no friction or grip, All right? So you put grip tape on it so that it kind of sticks to your hand when you're doing stuff. All right. On this main section, there is a marked point of balance. Now, on a lot of uh, more traditional flow tools that are with uh, or that use wicks and uh, get lit on fire. There's usually, or there's quite often, two points of balance, one for dry, one for wet. Uh, this lightsaber doesn't change weight, so there's only one point of balance. And the weight on this is actually pretty dead on here, on this point of balance. Right. Up here, that carbon fiber shaft has been joined to an aluminum, or a machined aluminum, lightsaber emitter. Now it's got a button here, this is a latching button lighted latching button. This emitter is hand-tooled. I'm actually not hand-tooled, or lathed. Um, it's machined by Christian Castro at Saber Flux Workshop, and so every one of them is slightly different as to where the ridges are. In here, we have a set screw for the LED. We have a set screw for the blade. Moving up the saber, we have a typical lightsaber blade. This is a trans white blade. There's a diffusion film inside, All right? And then once we get to the tip, it's a little bit different. The tip is wrapped in a silicon self-adhesive tape. And I'll talk about this a little bit later down the road here because this is the weak part of the saber. But uh, this, this tip up here, it makes the saber look a little bit odd in terms of a traditional lightsaber. We're used to more of the, 
bullet shaped tip a lot of the time. Um, it still lights up, as you can see. <clears throat> but this is there so that when this thing gets dropped, the tip doesn't go flying off. Um, it's there to secure the tip on, it's also there to provide a little bit of protection. And uh, I'll discuss that in just a little bit. But that's the basic anatomy of this thing. All right, so talking about function, uh, a flow st or a flow tool like this or a flow sword is something that if you're doing contact moves, you are going to drop this thing. So uh, Christian Castro has made something that is designed to be able to take that. The first time I saw somebody try to make a flow sword uh, for the lightsaber market uh, was a group called Flow Sabers, and they had a Kickstarter, and their saber was metal. And it was weighted for the flow moves, but it was metal and it had some sharp edges. And if you've got aluminum and you drop aluminum, it's going to get dinged up and mashed up over time. I've dropped this thing a lot, as you might be able to tell from all the mud on the, uh, on the pommel here. I've dropped this thing a lot, and it doesn't really mind. Okay, most of the time when you drop it, it hits here first, then it hits here, which is partly why this thing is guarded like it is. And sometimes if you drop it on a ledge or uneven ground, it can hit in the middle. You might get slight dings on your blade, but those will sand out. Uh, you do get dings on this emitter here. You can see a few of those dings right here. So there is going to be some wear and tear. But that wear and tear basically goes towards weathering and doesn't really destroy the saber like it would if the whole saber was made out of aluminum because most of the impact is absorbed by this and this. All right, the uh, carbon fiber shaft is really durable and isn't going to break, which is nice. The chassis inside, though, as you can see, is a PLA material, 3D printed. All right, so this is... PLA and not ABS, but I'm pretty sure that it feels like it's printed at 100%. Uh, I have dropped this a lot, as I said, and I haven't noticed that there's any sort of, been any sort of damage to the chassis. Most of the impact has been absorbed by this. So within the lightsaber community, there's sort of an inside joke about a uh, Fisk rating, which is, uh, can this thing be dropped from three feet? Absolutely, this, this carries a Fisk rating. Um, all right. <clears throat> So you will end up with damage here. You will end up with some dings in and around it, but mostly it's a no frills functional design that's designed to take that sort of abuse. The one weak spot in this is this tape here at the end. Now, if you do a lot of stuff with fire flow arts, this sort of silicon self-adhesive tape is something that you probably actually have around already, but you will need to replace this. The reason for that is that if you stretch a material over something and then you puncture that material, it tears or it creates runs. Imagine if you like stretched a balloon over something and then you put a pinprick in that balloon, that pinprick would expand and the balloon would tear. All right, so this tape, that happens as well. If it gets a ding in it or a puncture in it, the tape will start to tatter and it will fall off. And if the tape falls off, the next time you drop it, the tip falls off. So you will have to, if you notice this tape getting tattered, you will have to replace this tape. The good news on that is that you can get like 30 feet of this stuff for like six bucks and you can have it around. So uh, if you're going to be using contact sabers or contact uh, flow tools, you probably should have some of that around anyways. You just need to get some clear stuff instead of the black stuff that's more common. All right, so this is something that uh, in future it would be interesting if he could discover a solution to this, some sort of rubber cap that would accomplish some of the same function as this, take that beating without tattering and falling off, yet still transmit light. Uh, but for now, it is silicon or clear at self-adhesive silicon tape. All right, one of the things that I would mention about this is I have seen sound flow sabers before. Okay, a sound flow saber is basically the same thing, only a lot thicker, and most of the time people just take that, uh, that core from an LGT saber and slide it into the bottom and then project the light up the blade and it creates all that sound. Okay, uh, the sound sabers, they're more expensive usually, uh, and all of that sound stuff is vulnerable to breakage. You put a soundboard in this and then you drop it a bunch, the soundboard is gonna break, the chassis is gonna break. 
right? Putting the LED down here, it's going to break. Christian's LED is up here, which is pretty close to the point of balance, which means it's going to be taking less damage than almost any other part of the saber, which is good. Uh, it also means that more light goes up the blade. All right, so um, this is a stunt saber, and it's only offered as a stunt saber. Uh, but for a lot of flow artists, a lot of people who are interested in the performing aspect of it, uh, not taken out at cons or anything necessarily, uh, we don't necessarily use the sound quite so much. So a stunt saber is perfectly fine. The LED in this is really bright, which is nice because uh, flow art community, a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the tools that are made just have LEDs in them and they say, oh, well, it's got LEDs, it glows at night, that's enough. Within the lightsaber community, we don't want stuff to just glow at night. We want things that project a beam up there that make it look like uh, that make it look like you can see it from a, over from an airplane flying over that you can blind your neighbor with. All right, Christian has incorporated the sort of industry standard high impact LED uh, that we're used to seeing in lightsabers into a flow tool, and that part is fairly unique. All right, so the general aesthetics of this. Does it pass as a typical lightsaber? Absolutely not. Uh, as a cosplay piece, you'd really have to embellish this to get away with it. There is a little bit of room for that within uh, the mythos of Star Wars. People like Darth Nil in Legends have lightsabers that are very similar to this, as does Darth Plagueis. Um, so it could be made into a cosplay or costuming lightsaber. But all things told, it wasn't designed to do that. It was designed to be a flow prop. It was designed for function more so than form. It's a pretty lightsaber, but it's a pretty lightsaber in a different sort of way than, uh, than that 10-inch thing that, uh, that looks like something right out of the movies. All right, so um, the cost on these is fairly high, and the availability is rather difficult. Um, these things are made in short runs. Uh, you have to find Saber Flux on Facebook and get in on one of those short runs. And then he makes them sort of, hand makes them one at a time. The cost is fairly high on these. I'm not real sure what it, uh, not real sure off the top of my head. I don't recall, but it's three, three-ish hundred dollars. Uh, now for a stunt saber, that might sound like a lot. But the precision balance on this, um, about, about that is what I saw the Flow Saber go for originally, and it was a stunt saber as well, but it was not as well designed as this. All right, the carbon fiber, the aluminum, if this were just an aluminum shaft, I can see that being way, way overpriced. But for what this is, and the time and energy that goes into it, and the fact that, you're being, or that it's being made individually one at a time, uh, I can understand why it is what it is, though it may not be in a lot of people's budget. Uh, there is a do-it-yourself home version of a contact saber that you can look up um, that you can sort of make out of spare parts. But even making it out of spare parts yourself, you're going to find that soon enough you're up to $50 to $100 just in spare parts making it entirely out of plastic. For the high-end material, the aircraft aluminum, the, uh, the carbon fiber, the, the calibration on it, it's not unreasonable for him to be asking what he's asking. Just be prepared for a heftier price tag than you might think you might need to pay for for a stunt saber. All right, so the balance on this, the durability on this, I'm very happy with what uh, Saber Flux Workshop has created here. Uh, I think that this is probably, well, this is definitely the best designed contact or contact lightsaber that I've I've ever seen. It's made to stand up to the things that are not lightsabers, like this, which is a Dark Monk uh, fire sword. Okay, here's those two points of balance I talked about earlier. This is a whole lot heavier than what Christian has made, but it's designed also to be lit on fire, so it's a lot burlier, but it's function over form. So that's what he was trying to bring to the lightsaber world, is the sort of function that we get in flow, or with some of these other flow props, and I think he's been successful at that. All right, so here it is, the contact flow saber from Saber Flux Workshops. Hopefully this review has been of use to you. If it has, join me back next time, and I'll see you then.